Can I get somebody to read what's up at the top of the paper? Please. Oops, wrong side. This side. Can I get somebody to read this up here? Somebody, anybody, come on. Guide the letter to finding the gate trail of the front right of the first house in the field trail to the ending of the gate. In fact, the field could be divided three A B. Um, gate requires three A. Perfect. So I need you to answer these questions. So start with, so Magdalena has 24 eggs total. If she makes only cakes and no cookies, how many cakes could she make? And then the opposite, if she makes only cookies and no cakes, how many batches of cookies would she make? And then figure out if she's making six batches of cookies, how many cakes could she make? And then you're gonna write an equation for it, graph the equation, and then answer number six. So let's take 10 minutes or so. Try and work on it on your own.
Okay, you guys, let's get started. So if she has 24 eggs and she makes only cakes, no cookies, how many cakes can she make? Why? Yeah, 24 divided by 3 gives us 8. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Or you can add three or add eight three times, then you'll get to 24. Perfect. So eight cakes. And what if she makes only cookies, no cakes? <clears throat> Why? Yeah, perfect. Divide 24 by two, and we'll get 12 batches of cookies. Good. What about if she makes six batches of cookies? How many cakes could she make? Why four? Well, why 12? Yes, six batches of cookies would take 12 eggs. Right, and if I take my 24 total eggs minus the 12 eggs that I use for cookies, I'd end up with 12 left over. So I have 12 for my cakes, and I use three eggs for every cake. So I just take 12 divided by three, and I get four total cakes, four cakes. How about an equation to model this? What do we got? Anybody? Anybody, anybody? An equation. Minus what? Yes, but that's our slope intercept equation. And we'll get to that in, in number six, which is good. But I want to write this in standard form, standard form. Perfect. 3x plus 2y equals 24. This is our standard form of a line. And what this is saying is like that 3x plus 2y tells me all my different combinations of x and y. And then that 24 is what we're calling a fixed sum, a fixed amount. That 3x is saying right x is our number of cakes so we use three eggs for every cake the y tells me batches of cookies i've got two eggs for every batch of cookies so 3x plus 2y is 24. 24. and now let's graph this relationship graph this so i haven't told you how to graph a standard form equation yet but 
in numbers one, two, and three, you have three different points that are on the line. And if we have three points on the line, then we could graph the line. So in number one, it said, if we make zero cookies, how many cakes could we make? Eight, right? And cookies is on my y-axis, cakes is on my x-axis. So zero cookies would be down here, right? And that would mean eight cakes. What is this point called? Yeah, that's my x-intercept. And what is the ordered pair of this point? What are the coordinates? Yeah, eight, zero, eight, zero. And then what about number two? What does number two tell me? What does number two tell me? Yeah, if I make zero cakes, it will give me 12 cookies. What is this point called? Sean, in a way, cut it out. Yeah, that's my y-intercept. And what's the coordinates of that point? There it is. 0, 12. So now I have two points, so that means I can just connect my two points. And I've got my line. Yeah. And then what did number three tell me? Because number three is another point on the line. What does number three tell me? What does number three tell me? What did we learn in number three? Yeah, if I have six batches of cookies, I'm going to have four cakes. There we go. That's another point on my line. Every single point on this line is a possible combination. Not all of those combinations are going to make sense because I can't really make like, I mean, I guess I could make half a cake. I could make like a mini cake or something, but right, the whole numbers make more sense. And then what about this? Do we agree that this equation is the same thing as this equation? Why? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can also tell because what's my y-intercept of this line here? 12, right? 12 is my y-intercept. And what's my slope of this line? How do I find slope from a line? Yeah, I find my rise doo -doo -doo. over run. What's my rise here? Hmm? Negative six. What's my run? Look at your units. Four. So my slope is negative six over four. How does that simplify? So what does it simplify to? Negative three over two. And what is that as a decimal? Negative 1.5. So look at that. If I look at this equation, that's slope intercept form, isn't it? Right? And what's my y intercept of this line? 12. <coughs> what's my slope of this line? Negative 1.5. So slope of negative 1.5, y-intercept of 12. I know that that's the same thing. But just as Tian said, we could also solve for y, and that would get us back here too. So let's just do that real quick. So I've got 3x plus 2y equals 24. If I want to solve for y, what do I need to get rid of? Hmm? Yeah, the 3x and the 2. What do I get rid of first? Uh, 
the three X. What's the opposite of a positive three X? So I subtract three X from both sides and I end up with two Y equals 24 minus three X. And then what's my last step to solve for Y? Divide everything by two. And I end up with y equals 12 minus 3 halves x, or y equals 12 minus 1.5x. Either way, that's the same exact thing. So just because two equations look different doesn't mean they're not the same thing. They can be equivalent equations. Can we flip over to the other side, please? And we'll take some notes. Okay. So standard form of a line shows combinations. of x and y that result in a fixed sum. That result in a fixed sum. Okay. Just like I said, that AX plus BY is all my possible combinations of X and Y, and then the fixed sum is all by itself on the other side. And the values of A, B, and C are going to be given in whatever problem you have. If we want to find the x-intercept from a standard form equation, we let y equal 0 and then solve for x. And if we want to find the y-intercept, just the opposite, we let x equals zero and solve for y. And if we want to rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form, we just have to solve for y, isolate the y. So once we get that written down, since we're working on the check for understanding questions. Yes, sir, I you have a question. So start working on the check for understanding questions, and then we'll go over them in a few minutes. No, no, come back. Okay, can I get somebody to read number one, please? Little Caesars has five dollars hot and ready pizzas. Five dollar hot and ready pizzas and sells two liters for a dollar and fifty cents. You have sixty dollars in the budget to buy food for your next class party. Perfect. So we're gonna let X be the number of pizzas, 
x is the number of pizzas, and y is our number of two liters, right? Pizzas cost five dollars per pizza, and two liters are dollar fifty each. So, can we write an equation to show all possible combinations? What do we get? At least something. What, what do we know? Perfect. Perfect. Right? 60 is our fixed amount. That's the amount of money that we have to spend. That's not going to change. And then Y told us the number of two liters, and each one was $1.50, so 1.5 Y. 1.5 per 2 liter plus 5 times however many pizzas we have. Perfect. What's the x intercept of this line? Why? How'd you get to 12? <laughs> what does it say at the top of your paper to find the x intercept? Yeah, we let y equal 0. So that means that in my equation, I'm going to make y 0. So that's 60 equals 1.5 times 0 plus 5x. But if y is 0, doesn't this whole term just cancel out? So now I just have that 60 equals 5x. And I think that was Emilio who said, now I just divide both sides by 5, right? So x would equal 12. And what is the significance? What does that mean? What does that have to do with pizzas and sodas? Phones should be away. What does the 12 mean? Huh? Yeah, it's a maximum amount of pizzas that we could buy. If we bought zero, zero soda, then we could buy 12 pizzas. That's a good point. We're going to pretend like we live in a world with no tax. I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying. We're going to pretend. And actually, there are some places that don't charge tax on food. Yeah. No, because it's not like the company is keeping the tax money. So they don't have to make up for that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. I think so. Yeah, no, because you watch it at the pump and it's not like they add tax at the end. So it's probably built into the price per gallon because they, they have to charge tax on gas. There's no way that they could. I don't know, though. You'd hope so. We're spending that much money on gas. That's a big money maker. Huh? They get enough what? What do you mean? What about my y intercept? What do I do for my y intercept? What do I do to figure out my y intercept? Yeah, I let x equal 0. Good. So then that means I plug 0 into my equation here for x. I get 60 equals 1.5y plus 5 times 0, but 0 times anything is 0, so this is just going to kind of cancel out. So now I have just 60 equals 1.5y, and then how do I solve for y? Phones should be away. Yeah, divide both sides by 1.5. So what does y equal? What does y equal? 40. And what's the significance of the 40? 
Yeah, that's a maximum amount of sodas that we could buy. If we bought no pizza. Zero pizzas equals 40 sodas. It's a lot. Okay. Well, then you'll live in a world with no roads, no firefighters, no schools. What? That's a, that's, that I can get behind. I am okay with that. Hmm? That's, that's essentially what money is. Just go back to a barter system. Then you're really going to need your algebra. You know, it makes it more confusing to be, you know, because if you want to trade, I don't know, let's say you fix cars, you want to trade your labor for working on my car in exchange for eggs, but I don't have eggs, I have goats. So now I have to trade in my goats for eggs and then trade you eggs for your labor. You know what I mean? And that's why we have money is to like simplify that process, but it's obviously not worked out well. <laughs> A worldwide currency, what would that solve? Wars. I don't think it would I don't think we would solve wars if we all just use the same amount of money. Because it would still be people trying to get more money. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's more like resources though, isn't it? Like that's why we've been fighting wars in the Middle East for a long time. We're just fighting for oil. Yeah, try stealing those yachts off of the billionaires. They're not going to be too happy. Everybody gets a yacht. <laughs> I don't disagree. Just saying. The whole is built yachts. Well, that's it. We don't have enough resources for everybody to have a yacht and everybody to have a private jet and everybody to have, I don't know, EVs or whatever you want. The whole world has the same Yeah. Huh? Why do we have to pay I, I have no problem. If everybody else has everything that they need, I am not bothered by that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we don't all have to be the same if we, like having the same amount of resources, it doesn't mean that we're all the same. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can use up the stuff. Yeah. 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 All right. We need to get back. Let's finish this. Find the slope in the y intercept of this line. Did anybody figure out what the slope is? That's it. Negative three, not the x. Just a negative three. That's okay. What's my y intercept? Huh? Yeah. How did we get there? How did we get there? Yeah, you solved it. So tell me my steps. How do I solve this? Add six x. Good. Shh. Please be quiet. Negative two y equals eighteen plus six x. And then what's my next step? Yep. Divide all terms by negative two. So I end up with y equals negative nine minus three x, right? 18 divided by negative 2 is just negative 9. 6 divided by negative 2 is just negative 3. And now it's in slope intercept form. That's my y intercept. This is my slope. I want to show you one other way to figure this out. And it's just going to take a couple of minutes. So, and this, I don't know, you can decide if it's easier or more confusing but it is another strategy to figure out what the slope in the y-intercept is from our standard form equation. Let me show you this. 
What is my standard form equation? No, that's slope intercept. What's my standard form? Yeah, what we just learned, AX plus BY equals C. And with just variables in place, let's solve for Y. What's my first step when I solve for Y? Yeah, subtract AX. So now I've got BY equals, I'm going to write it like this, negative AX plus C. And then what's my next step? Yep, divide everything by B. So then I'll end up with this. Y equals negative A over B. Uh, let me write that. Y equals negative A over BX plus C over B. And that's in slope-intercept form, right? What's my slope? Give me the letters that are my slope. Negative yeah, negative A over B. And what's my y-intercept? C over B. So that means that if I'm given an equation in standard form, I can just look at these two numbers. Negative A over B would be my slope. And then C over B would be my y-intercept. So if I look at that equation we did at the beginning of class, 3x plus 4y equals 12 really easily i know three is a four is b 12 is c so my slope is going to be negative three fourths and my y-intercept would just be 12 over four which is three does that make sense you see where i got that from so that's you, you can just solve for y and figure it out that way you can do that or if you want to remember this, you can remember slope is negative A over B and the y-intercept is C over B. Okay, number three. I'm going to find the value of A so that the line given by AX plus 10Y equals 20 has an x-intercept of negative 5. So, when I say the x-intercept is negative 5, that means that when y is 0, x equals negative 5. So to figure out what a is, I'm going to start by plugging 0 in for y. I need you guys to cut it out. So I plug 0 in for y here, and I get ax plus 10 times 0 equals 20. And 10 times 0 is just 0, so that term kind of goes away. So now I have ax equals 20. But what does x equal? Yeah, that negative 5. So now I have a times negative 5 equals 20. And how do I solve for a? Yeah, which is what? Perfect. So A equals negative 4. Cool. Simpler than we thought, huh, Micah? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like these kind of problems where you're kind of given different knowns and then you got to plug them in and shuffle things around, figure it out. <laughs> Um, all right, you guys can turn that into the inbox.